Medical help is coming for Canadians who didn't qualify when the Canada Emergency Response Benefit was first rolled out. The CERB is being expanded now to include part-time, seasonal and contract workers, as well as anyone whose employment insurance recently ran out. Mike Licatura has the details. It would be like Christmas not happening for a retailer. That's big. As a self-employed artisan, the countrywide shutdown means Megan Rose Babb has no one to buy the jewelry and accessories she crafts by hand. She nearly had to dip into her line of credit, but then she was given a lifeline. We are expanding the Canada Emergency Response Benefit to include people making up to $1,000 a month, seasonal workers, and people whose EI has recently run out. It applies to part-time workers, volunteer firefighters, and people like Megan. It makes a lot of difference to me um, because now I know that I can pay my mortgage, I can pay my bills, buy food, <laughs> all those things. The CERB has meant a lot to a lot of Canadians. In the first week of its rollout, the benefits saw nearly three and a half million applications. Anyone who has applied for employment insurance before that time was automatically put in the CERB stream, pushing the total number of applications for help dating back to March 15th to nearly 6 million Canadians. According to the government, they've processed 90% of those claims. I want to now turn the NDP is claiming a victory, the saying they helped push the government to include more categories of workers than the Liberals originally planned. Still, Jagmeet Singh says many more need help, especially students. We need people to stay at home, and then we're asking students to go out and apply for a job. That doesn't seem to be in line with what the public health experts are saying. The Prime Minister says help will be coming for post-secondary students later this week, but it's unclear if they too will be allowed to apply for the CERB. And on that, government officials are reminding people who've already received the benefit that because a new pay period is about to start, they have to contact the government to reapply or reconfirm that they're still eligible for the benefit. Donna? All right, Mike, thanks. The American President Donald Trump is facing criticism for his decision to suspend funding to the World Health Organization. He blames the WHO for not doing enough to stop the coronavirus and for being too lenient on China, where it all started. The Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation is the next biggest donor to the WHO after the U.S. And in a tweet, Bill Gates said, halting funding for the World Health Organization during a world health crisis is as dangerous as it sounds. Their work is slowing the spread of COVID-19, and if that work is stopped, no other organization can replace them. The world needs the WHO now more than ever. And today, the head of the U.S. Centers for Disease Control said this. You know, I'm just going to say that WHO has been an, uh, a long-standing partner for CDC. We've worked together to fight uh, health crisis all around the world. We continue to do that. Because the WHO isn't just fighting COVID-19, it works with other diseases that need desperate attention too. As Jackson Prosco reports, the huge cut in funding could be disastrous. We regret the decision of the President of the United States. This was not a battle the World Health Organization was prepared for, not in the middle of a global pandemic. The WHO failed in this basic duty and must be held accountable. But as COVID-19 cases and deaths surge in the United States, President Donald Trump has started looking for someone to blame. He's targeting the WHO by slashing funding and using his office to launch a smear campaign. The delays the WHO experience in declaring a public health emergency cost valuable time. We alerted the world on January the 5th. Systems around the world, including the U.S., began to activate their incident management systems on January the 6th. On January 23rd, the WHO warned cases may appear in any country. Thus, all countries should be prepared for containment. Shortly after, Trump praised their work. The World Health Organization, and uh, a lot of them are composed of our people. They're fantastic. That was before the president faced criticism for his own failure to act on those warnings, when the U.S. could have rolled out proven testing and stocked up on medical supplies. The World Health Organization is not responsible for that slow response. Again, other countries received the same information and responded a lot earlier. The U.S. provides nearly half a billion dollars to the WHO, about 15% of the total budget. 
The agency focuses largely on work in developing countries that are ill-prepared to tackle the pandemic on their own. The World Health Organization is not like the United States government where we can go into debt. It's, it's an organization that has to have money to kind of keep its efforts going. Despite warnings that a failure to control the outbreak in any country will have dire consequences for every country, the Trump administration seems undeterred, pressing ahead with a fight against those fighting the virus. Jackson Prosco, Global News, Washington. Some of Canada's less busy U.S. border crossings are about to become even more quiet because of COVID-19. The Canada Border Services Agency is temporarily cutting hours at 27 locations in B.C., Alberta, Manitoba, Saskatchewan and Quebec. The changes, which won't impact commercial traffic, take effect tonight and will remain in effect until further notice. You can find the full list of the affected crossings and their new hours on our website, globalnews.ca slash globalnational. The new series that goes inside the COVID-19 pandemic, from the front lines to the everyday heroes helping us cope with the...